This is the first in a series of sessions about valuation. Now, when I say the word valuation, most of you think about models and numbers. And you're right, there are lots of models and lots of numbers. But there are three broad themes I hope to establish in these coming sessions. The first is that valuation is simple. We choose to make it complex. The second is every valuation, even though it's about numbers, has a story, a narrative behind it. A good valuation is more about the story than about the numbers. And third, when valuations go bad, it's not because of the numbers. It's because of three big problems I see in valuation. The first is bias. You come in with preconceptions and they find their way into your valuation. The second is uncertainty. We're not very good about dealing with uncertainty. And the third is complexity. We live in a complex world with complex data and complex models. And sometimes that gets in the way of the simplicity that should be at the core of valuation. That's what I hope to bring through in the next few sessions. This is a first in a series of sessions about valuation. Valuation of what you might ask of just about any business you can think of. Small or large, public or private, emerging or developed market. And here's my objective. By the end of this class, I would like you to be able to value just about any asset. Let's see if we can get there. When I first started teaching valuation 26 years ago at NYU, I made the mistake of assuming that everybody else was as interested in valuation as I was. In hindsight, that was a bad mistake. Most people don't believe in valuation. By most people, I include most people who do valuation for a living. But they do it. They do it to cover their rear end. They do it because it's their jobs. So let me start off by explaining why I do valuation before I start delving into the details. I do valuation to fight the lemming in me. Now you probably heard about lemmings, right? They became famous or infamous about 50 years ago when National Geographic filmed the most amazing sight. Thousands of big, ugly, rat-like creatures, that's what lemmings look like, gathered together on a cliff, ran right off the cliff into an ocean. And ever since, one of the big questions has been, why did they do it? Why did they go off that cliff? Why did they commit collective suicide? I don't know the answer to the question, but let's do some collective imagery. You can see why the first lemming did it, right? He was going too fast, he couldn't stop, he went right off the cliff into an ocean. What about the second guy? He was going too close to the first guy, same fate. But put yourself in the shoes of the very last lemming in that group. You're going as fast as you can towards a cliff. You've seen an entire tribe disappear off that cliff. I would assume you had second thoughts about what you were planning to do. Your right brain, left brain, whatever part of you is rational, saying, stop, don't do it. But then you have this voice in the back of your head. You know what it's saying? They must know something that you don't. Remember those seven words. They're the seven most deadly words in investing. You know when you'll hear them? You value a company. So you come up with a value of $50 per share. Let's give the company a name. Let's suppose it's Amazon. Stock's trading at 278, one of the great stocks of the last decade. You come up with 50. Your rational side saying, don't buy that stock. It's expensive. But then you hear this voice in the back of your head saying, they must know something that you don't. And when you hear that voice, magical things start happening to your valuation. Your cash flows increase, your growth rates go up, your discount rates go down, 50 becomes 100, 100 becomes 150. And before you know it, guess what? You're at 275, 300, justifying your need to buy. In fact, you can divide all investors into three groups of lemmings. The first group I call proud lemmings. I'm a lemming and I'm proud to be a lemming. Who am I talking about? They call themselves momentum investors. But that's pretty much what they do, right? They look for a crowd, they join in, you're buying, I'm buying. You're selling, I'm selling. Why are you buying? I don't care. The second group of lemmings I call Yogi Bear lemmings. Have you ever seen Yogi Bear cartoons or, or maybe even that ill-fated movie that came out? Remember his most fam fam famous expression? He said, smarter than the average bear. Yogi Bear lemmings think they're smarter than the average lemming. What do they want to do? They want to run with the crowd till the very edge of the cliff. And at the last moment, veer away. If you can pull it off, that's great. You get all the upside of momentum and none of the downside. Now I'm afraid I cannot be a proud lemming. I don't have the stomach to be a yogi bear lemming. I have no idea where the cliff is coming. If you ask me to describe myself, you can pretty much see where I'm going. I'm a lemming with a life vest. That's all valuation is. Valuation gives you a life vest. It gives you something to hold on to when everybody else changes their mind and goes in the other direction. It's not going to stop you from doing really stupid things. 
if you really, really, really want to buy something, you're going to find a way to buy it. If you really want to sell something, you're going to find a way to sell it. Valuation slows the process down, gives your rational side a chance to mount an argument. That's why we do valuation.